Good order, Kyokoto Katonga, which means red feathers of life to all of you. This story tonight is the story of Taiti Karakara. Okay, there was this man named Taeya, and his wife's name was Rani, and they had three sons. Rimero, which means long arm, Rimopoto, which means short arm, and Taiti Karakara. And in those days, it's said that Taiti Karakara, of the three children, sons of, uh, of Taeya, it's said that Taiti Karakara had be has become, became a family, like a family spirit. And in those days when they lived, of, their, of the three sons, there were two children, two sons that the parents loved. The last one, they did not love him very much. He was the one, that was Taiti Karakara. He was the one who would go and fetch the food. They would send him on errands. And on one of these days, they went out, he went out with his older brothers. And they were walking down, walking around, talking and joking. And the two old, older brothers, they took their younger brother and they beat him up and knocked him down on the ground. And then they went back home. They left him to cry. And they got home and the parents said, where's your younger brother? And they said, we don't know. But the parents didn't go look for him because their love for the two older brothers was great. And this boy, he was, they, they left him to cry and he cried and when he was done crying, he kind of got himself back up, went home. And his parents asked him, so where have you been lost to? And he said, my older brothers beat me up. And the parents, they asked their two older sons, have you, did you beat your younger brother? And they said, he's lying. And the two older brothers, they talked. They said, maybe we should take him off somewhere. One of these days, let's take him off, lead him off someplace. We'll beat him up and kill him, throw him in the sea to float away. And the other one brother said, yeah, let's do that to him. So another day came, and the two older brothers, they left, they led their younger brother, Taiti Karakara. They let him off to go to play surfing, I mean, to, to ride in the waves called surfing. And they got to that place, and this is what they did. When they were surfing, what they did is they had surf riding contests. But this is what happened. The younger brother would always beat his older brothers. And they got really mad at him. And they took their younger brother and they beat him up until he was dead. And they threw him in the sea to float away. And then they went back home. And the parents, they said, okay, and when they got back home, they didn't tell anybody what had happened. And it was really late. And when they were at home, the parents said, where's your younger brother? And they said, we don't know. And the father, he said, the day is late, the sun's about to set, where's your younger brother? He hasn't come back. But the parents, they didn't think about him much because their love for the two older sons was great. And this boy, when he was thrown into the sea, after he was dead, he was thrown into the sea, he floated away, and a current took him out into the high seas, away from the land. And then the, the king of the sea, his name was Tongahuduhudu, he saw that body floating. And Tongahuduhudu was a whale. And Tongahuduhudu, he took this boy and he took the body to his country, to the, to the bottom of the sea. And then when he was down there, he took the body and he worked with the body and he brought the boy back to life again. And that boy in Tonga Huruhuru, they lived in Hawaii Tiararo, which is Hawaii below, which is this land under the sea. And then the parents, you know, the parents are at home and they realize one of their sons was dead. That Taiti Karakara, they kind of dawned on him, he's dead. And they asked the older brothers, you know, and, and the father, he went out, the parents, they went out looking for him. And they looked everywhere and there wasn't a place that they didn't look and after they're done looking in all the different places they came back Taiya came back home and he said to his sons he said tell me where is your younger brother 
And Rimaroa, the oldest, he said, I don't know. And the father said to the second son, Rima Polto, he says, Tell me now, tell me, where is your brother? And Rima Polto, he groaned in his heart. He thought, if I tell him he's been killed, then Rimaroa is going to beat me up. And if I say that I don't know, I won't get beaten up by Rimaroa. But if I say that I don't know, my parents, if I keep hiding it, my parents are going to die from looking. They're going to die from looking, and he thought, it's better for me to tell them what's happened to him so they don't keep looking for him. They're going to die from looking. And then Taya, the father, he said, he said again, why aren't you talking, why aren't you answering my question? Arima Poto said, Taitikarakar is dead. Arima Roa beat him up. He was thrown into the sea to float away. And the father, he was really, really troubled, and he said, okay, tell me where you went surf riding at. Arima Poto told him the place. So the Taia went to that place, and then he looked, and he didn't see Taitikarakar. And he went back home, and he was troubled, he had troubled thoughts, and those troubled thoughts stayed with him for a long time, but after a while, they kind of forgot about Taiti Karakara. And that boy, Taiti Karakara, when he lived in Hawaii Tiararo, in Hawaii below with Tonga Huru Huru, this is what his, he would do in his country, in that country. He would go with Tonga Huru Huru into the different wars that Tonga Huru Huru was fighting. And Tonga Huru Huru taught him how to, be a, how to be a kaito, a warrior. And that boy, he became a kaito, a warrior for Hawaii. Okay? And uh, you have to understand the trauma twin culture. He, a, a kaito no Hawaii, a warrior of Hawaii, is like massively tough warrior. And um, in those days, there was this other enemy that came to, there was this, there was this other enemies came to Taia, to his land, and fought Taia. The enemies were, the, it was Kohei and his men, and they came to the land of Taia, and they fought Taia, the father of Taiti Karakara. They fought them, and the fighting was going on, and Taia and his people, they were, they were losing. And some of them, just only some of them remained, but not very many. And Taiki Karakara, he knew that this war, this fighting was going on. And that Taia was mostly defeated. But he didn't tell Taiti Karakara. And then a came, time came when Taiti Karakara, Tonga Huru Huru, he could tell, he understood, that there's just going to be one more battle left, and Taia and all the men are going to be dead. And then Tonga Huru Huru, he told Taiti Karakara, he said, Return back to the land. And he talked like that because he was a will. Your father is almost going to be wiped out by Kohe. And then Tonga Huru Huru told Taiti Karakari, he said that one of his brothers was already dead, Rima Poto. So then Tonga Huru Huru, he returned back into this world, into this, to the land, into this world. And um, when he got there, and then when he came, he came with an army of whales. And when he came, um, he saw that they were about to start, their, they were going to have this battle. That they were getting ready, Taie and Kohei, those two sides, were getting ready to have a battle. And he, knew, he could see that it was really close to hap happening. And um, Taiki Karakara didn't show himself. He hid, he, hid, he hid off in the deep water outside of the reef, and he just watched. And he saw that the, the army of the, the, the men, the army of Kohe, they were running along the land, they were running to the battle to go on the last battle, and they were running up there. But Taiti Karakari just let them go. He was going to fight them later. And Taia, the father, he saw that the men of Kohe were coming to fight him. And he knew he was going to get defeated. And he said to his wife, he said, You run. You look for a way to save yourself. 
I, I will, my breath is short. In other words, I'm going to die. One of my sons is dead. Only one remains. My breath is about to go out of me. And then the, 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 the army of Kohe, they showed up. They arrived. And Taea, he grabbed his wife and he rubbed noses with her. In the Tuamatuan culture, that's called Tikarofa Hopeng, the last farewell. It's what you give some, something just before you bury them. In this case, he's going to give it, he's going to, Taea is the guy who's going to die. He's saying his last farewell to his wife. And then he just let his wife run off, go look for a way to save herself. And then Taea, he turned to the battle. And Ta Taiki Karakara was going to fight in that battle too. And Taea, he turned to the battle and they started their battle. And it wasn't very long when they were fighting. The remaining son of Rimoroa, the remaining son of Taea, he was killed. And when Taea saw that his last son, his second son, was dead, he threw down his spear and he lay down on the sand. He was going to let somebody kill him. Kind of like committing suicide in the field of battle. Taiki Karakara, he saw this. And then Taiye just kind of gave up his last breath. He wasn't going to fight anymore. And then Taiki Karakara, he got ready for the fight. And the men, the fighting men of Kohe, they saw that there was this warrior behind them who was fighting them. There was Taiki Karakara. And it, was, it really confused them. They didn't know what to do. They didn't know how to respond. And they were really troubled. And then they, there was this fighting. And it wasn't very long. And all the men of Kohe were killed to Taiti Karakara. And only Kohe remained. And so Taiti Karakara and Kohe, they fought. And it wasn't very long. Kohe was dead. And when Kohe was dead, Taiti Karakara, he stood up there on the fighting floor. And he looked around. And there was, he was the only man left standing there on the fighting floor. And Taiti Karakara, he saw that his father was there, and his father was laying down on the ground. And Taea, he was waiting for somebody to spear him. And he thought, he thought these guys that were fighting were just the men of Kohe that were fighting. And Taiti Karakara, he called out to his father. He said, Stand up. It is I, your son. Taiti Karakara. And the father, he didn't, he didn't look up. He just kept laying down. He didn't stand up. He didn't look up. And he just groaned in his heart. And he was thinking, he was thinking, this is a joke. This is a trick. This is a lie. And and then Taia, he asked Taiti Karakara, he said, How will I know that you're Taiti Karakara? And his eyes did not look up. He just kept his face down, laying on the ground. Just, and he's just asking questions that way. And Taiti Karakara, he told his father about what his older brothers had done to him and about the circumstances of him being killed. And Taia, when he heard that, he stood up and he saw that it was Taiti Karakara. And then the father, he took his son he hugged his son, and Taea, he wept over Taiti Karakara. And when he was done talking to Taiti, Taiti Karakara, he was done crying over him. Taea said to Taiti Karakara, he says, it's good, we go see your mother. Let's go back to the land, to our home, and you'll see your mother. So they went there. When they got there, Ranu, she was sitting there in that place, the mother. And, that, and Taiti Karakara, that was his mother. And Taea, he said to his wife, Ranu, he says, this is Taiti Karakara. And when she heard that, she was so, she was just so shocked. She fell down and she died. And then Taea, he fell down and he died too. This story is done. Now, this story had a surprise ending. What in the world was happening here? I don't know. I've, the point of me making learning how to tell the story, 
telling it like that. I was hoping that somehow it would come to me. I would understand what this meant. And I had this one friend, he's from the Tuamotu Islands. He was born in Vahitahi, like in 1922. He's been dead for like 15 years. And I had told him this story one night. And I said, you know, what's going on with this story? Because some of the, some of the stories, there's, there's deeply symbolic stories. And what's going on with this story? You know, why did the mother die? And he said, well, sometimes people are so surprised, they just have a heart attack. Well, why did the father die right immediately afterwards? Well, sometimes somebody's spouse dies, and they die right away too. And for him... It wasn't symbolic. This was the truth. This had happened this way. The story about Taiti Karakara. Um, for them, you know, in those days, this is the truth. And I'm trying to look for the symbols. And sometimes I can find symbols. And this is one case I can't. But this is the story about Taiti. Oh, there's one thing about the Tuamak Tuans. In their stories, they always have the idea, there's a lot of stories about the lone warrior. Taiti Karakara, he comes back, he comes with the, the army of whales. But the whales don't do the fighting. It's sort of just, so, it's kind of to show that he's really a tough guy. He's got an army of whales with him. But he was alone who fought those people. And he killed them all off single-handedly. And at the very end, he stands up, and he's the only guy left. Okay. And there's other stories where basically you've got the lone warrior. You don't have a bunch of guys fighting the general. You have the lone warrior. And Taiti Karakara, at the end of the story, he is the lone warrior. And a lot of the Tuamotuan stories got that theme in them. Anyway, Kuahopi te